Wagwan guys, what's good? Welcome to or welcome back to Mission Accomplished, where we showcase the lives of those who have accomplished much. I'm your host, probably the one and only, I think I'm the one and only, Lemon Winamo. And I am your co-host, Tendo Ithiga. Let's get into it. Now today, we have a very special guest. We always have special guests. Tendo is right. So, he's also no, he's known as the roaming chef on social media platforms such as TikTok. And his most common phrase I'd say is... Done, 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 done. Yes, done. done. <laughs> now, how, did, how, did, how do you think that you caught that phrase? Like, when did saying done become your thing? Done. Ah, uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's a long story. Because um, when I started uh, doing the cooking videos, um, I used to lay over music. Uh, but then when I started now doing the voiceovers using my own voice, it's... Because the dance beat is basically how I, I, I sort of operate, especially when I'm shooting outside, because it, it takes a lot of uh, logistics, and I'm sure the, the guys behind the camera knows, you know, the planning, you know, it's all about ticking boxes. Yeah. Uh, so, like when you're um, when you're recording um, a cooking video, it's it's not necessarily the same process as when I'm cooking without shooting. That's faster. The the flow is a bit different. But if I am going to to cook, well, like when I'm shooting, I already have the the script, the video that I want at the end of the of the cooking session. I already have it in my head. So it's all about like when I was shooting this scene i was just telling myself in my head okay this is done this is done so, so it's like a check book yeah it, it, it was like a check check checklist for me not on, not only on the chopping on everything so when i started putting the voiceovers um subconsciously it, it went on to the voiceover so i didn't notice it at first and then people started pointing it out so at first it felt a bit you know i feel ah maybe i'm saying it a bit too much because everyone you know in every conversation you know when you listen to yourself and no one likes listening to the sound of their of their voice there are always words you'll find that you are you're repeating a little bit too much compared to other words like for me um i think it's so uh, i think i start a lot of conversation with so or, or, or something like that or something like that yeah so i started saying it on the on my videos and then there were lots of comments about it but Many were some was negative, many were positive. So I decided, okay, I'm going to to keep it because as long as the the audience likes it, because I usually say the, the, the picture you have of yourself and what people see it's totally different things. So when you see yourself from the perspective of of the audience, is when you realize ah, that's when you realize ah. By the way, one of my eyes are bigger, eh? yeah. <laughs> you know. But when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're like ah, perfect. But when you see yourself in a different media channel, mm -hmm. is when sometimes the insecurities can come up, but that those jitters usually just go away with time. Yeah. Now, before we proceed into more interesting conversations with Chef Ombachi, aka the roaming chef, could you introduce yourself a bit more to the viewers? A bit more. You've already done all the introductions I needed. Uh, Dennis Ombachi, aka the roaming chef, depending on uh, where or how you know me if it's through rugby it's dennis ombachi if it's social media through cooking uh, the roaming chef so former rugby player kenya sevens international uh, participated up to the olympic games and, and everything but now social media content creator and yeah a good a good person you participated in the olympics yeah way 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 back in 20 2016 i think you guys were, were just being born i was four you were four. four. Uh, thank you for making me feel very old. You're not <laughs> old. I'm old. Um, you're not fifty, so you don't have white hair. That's the difference between old and age. What's the difference? Aged 
is being a grandfather. How was your experience going for the Olympics? 2016 was a trio, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was it's, it's it's an amazing experience. It's, it was the first time Kenya was participating in the Olympics and this is in rugby sevens. So we've, uh, we've always been part of the Olympics, you know, the track and field events. But in rugby sevens it was the, the first time. So yeah, like one of the rugby alumni. We, we were the pioneers, yeah, the first the first people to, to take Kenya to the to the Olympic Games. Yeah, so it was interesting, you know. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we didn't perform to the best of our um, capabilities, yeah, but the experience, you know, they say the spirit of the Olympic Games is in participating, not competing, but at the end of the day, we are there to compete. Yeah, but the experience was good. Could you take us back to your childhood and explain to us how you first came up with those ideas of becoming a rugby player and a chef? Uh-huh. Rugby, unfortunately, it's, it's not a sport that it's that is played, you know, to the very grassroots uh, level. I would say in our education system, like something like nursery, primary, nursery and primary school, which are basically your formative years. Uh, I didn't know rugby existed. I only knew about rugby when I joined uh, high school. So that was in. I sort of had a stint in KCI school because I started in KCI school before I moved to Kiambu High School. But in Kiambu High School is when I developed like a serious. I won't say really because uh, it also uh, will be a lie if I tell people that, oh, I love rugby. It was my, I don't know, first love or anything. No, no, no. Uh, the reason why I joined rugby in, in, in high school was uh, to, to just to keep me occupied, you know, keep me busy. Um, I remember back then the principal, Mr. Guitar, who was like, who told me, why don't you try um, your hand in, in rugby? Because just like any other um, kid, you know, I was, I don't want to say in discipline, I was a bit naughty, so I was suspended a couple of barrels. It was just being naughty. I saw the, for me, sports was something to, to ground me down. Like, I think I had too much energy and education was not utilizing all of it because I, I still was performing well. I was, I was always a, a top student, but I still had this pent up energy. That's why you know, you need to engage in mischief here and there. Did you ever want to become a chef? No, no, never, never in my wildest um, dream. Even when I started uh, the cooking thing, it was not really to be to become a chef because uh, I did economics in, uh, in campus. So for me that was okay, that's going to be my profession after I retire from, from rugby. And that's why I usually tell people like it's always good to have a dream. Like me, I wanted to be a policeman when I when I was growing up, but yeah, kinda looking back, looking at the lives of policemen and what they stand for, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm glad I didn't turn out to be to be a policeman. So having the dream um, is good, having a vision is good, but uh, life is uh, is always dynamic. You never know where you're going to to end up. So it's always good to have a dream. Like if you want to be a doctor, you want to be an engineer, whatever you want to be. Uh, but I usually s- compound everything into into short term goals. The easiest way to achieve your long term dreams is just to try and be a better person than you were yesterday, tomorrow. So in, in whatever you're doing, even if it's this podcasting thing you're doing, like you try and be better than you were maybe in the, in the previous podcast. I usually say, uh, like, I'm not the most talented person. I was not the, the best or, or the most talented player in our team. I still believe I'm not the best talented chef or, or content creator and cook outside them. Because, but talent is something that is not within our control. I can't control the amount of talent you have, the amount of talent you have, but what uh, is within our control is our ability to work hard. So it's allowed for you to be more talented than me, but one thing for sure will never allow you to outwork me because hard work beats talent at the end of the day, any day. That was very inspirational. Yeah. So now, they say the age of 15 is very significant. Did any significant things happen at your age 15? 15, I think we were either in Nandi Hills or Kiambu somewhere. My dad was a tea, who used to work in the tea plantation, so that's where we grew up. So it, basically my childhood, like from from when I was born till 18, was waking up and seeing tea leaves, coffee, plantation. So it was like a, a routine repeating. It was more of life in the wild, just walks in the forest, 
which was boring back then, but now with all the fast moving world, now that I'm in the city, I sort of appreciate it more and miss it. Yeah, so my 15, my teenage years, my teenage years I spent, I spent trying a lot of, a lot of things and this I think would be an advice to any young person you and you uh, like, like well it, it, it's good even you well it's good to to have you know your target like what you want to focus on and dedicate all your energy to it but at 15 from 10 even from 5 you know basically as a child before you you mature into a young or developing adult uh, for me it's all it's, it's, it's always about trying anything and and everything just try a, a lot of things because at 15 i another thing i'm good at now is is carpentry that people don't know much of but it's a, it's a, it's a hobby so at 15 I, I tried a bit of uh, carpentry not refined but you know making these makeshift um Zakuku, the, the rabbit houses you know and fishing you know illegal fishing you know just you know just funny funny weird activities sports just be adventurous. The older you become, like at the age you get, the more responsibilities are um, put on your shoulder. You really won't have that much time that you guys think you have now. So this is the time to, I say, to experiment on everything. This is the time for you guys to, to make all the mistakes. Because uh, at this age, we will forgive you for everything. And there's no way in life you'll be able to progress also without making mistakes. So. This is the age to make mistakes, this is the age to experiment, try everything. I tried, I was making radios. Yeah, just be be a young person. Like, it's cool to be focused, but this is the age of trying anything and everything. You never know which one will click. Yeah. yeah. Would you say, for example, you told us a lot about your, your younger self. So, if that 15-year-old um, was to come and see where you have reached now, what would he think? Or, or First of all, he will say? be surprised. Because <laughs> even me, I'm still surprised. I never knew I'll end up like where I am today. So my 15-year-old me will be surprised. Will be thankful to, first of all, to, I believe, my, my parents who have been able to, you know, to instill lots of values, you know, in me to be able to get to, to where I am. Yeah, and I think even before thanking everyone, I should thank myself. <laughs> yeah, because it's, it, it, it's not being easy and it's always good to appreciate yourself. Because, yeah. yeah, it's not been easy. There's been a lot of challenges. And, yeah, that's what makes you stronger. So I think 15-year-old me would be proud of myself that I didn't turn out to be a policeman like I wanted to be. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. So, yeah, your dreams are, are valid. I don't know who said that, is it? Who said your dreams are valid. Is it Eliud or Obama? No, Obama said yes. If that. you know who said that your dreams are valid, please tell us. <laughs> How, um, so um, I I've, I've watched one of your videos. You should go and watch them. They're really nice. You, you learn how to cook. Um, and follow me, the roaming chef. Yes. Is it the roaming chef or at? The ro just the roaming chef. The roaming chef. <laughs> You um, will not believe your taste buds. Yes. So, how was your ex? He went to Russia. Did you go to Russia? Oh, yeah, my kids are half Russian of Kenya. Oh, that's so, so you have Russian? Yeah, so every every year we usually go to, to Russia for like a month so that I can they can spend time with their grandparents. So, you went to Russia? Yeah. And. How, uh, my first question, I saw that in one of your videos that you went hunting in a Fishing. forest. Fishing. In a forest. Not Fishing. illegally though. Yes. Not illegal, not illegal. Not illegal. He's passed that phase. Um, <coughs> we went fishing in a forest and how was that experience? Like, did it bring you back to the times when you were a child or was just another country video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, for that... It was an, a cooking video at the end of the day, but for me, uh, it was sort of just trying to trace my roots. Because um, when, when we were kids, we were doing a lot of that, like hunting for um, rabbits. They're not rabbits. What are these wild rabbits called? Hares. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we used to hunt them, um, the fishing and, and stuff. Yeah, so it was sort of recreating my childhood, but the purpose of the video was sort of just to, to pay homage to them 
original in, inhabitants of the of the highland of the, of the Sakhalin island in Russia, which are, who are the nymphs. Like, just to imagine how the first, you know, human beings or ancestors, how they how they lived, how life was like, and yeah, it was pretty tough but rewarding and and satisfying. Yeah, so I I enjoyed myself. I believe more than my regular cooking videos. I believe. How was it eating the um, raw caviar, yeah. fish eggs? Were you that hungry or? Was yeah, it yeah, we were hungry. But even if I was not hungry, you know, it's 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 fresh salmon uh, caviar. Did you know what you were eating before you ate it? Yeah, of course. I've, I've had caviar a, a lot a lot of times before. Have you ever tried caviar? No. Yeah, it's it's no. it's it's. it's Basically, it's, it's fish eggs and yeah, it's it's creamy, oily. You guys have tried, you know, your kids, the cod liver oil, the fish oil. Yeah. yeah. You don't like it. Exactly. Yeah. But now it, that it, it, it has that, it tastes like that, but better. I don't know how to explain. You just have to try it. Some people say it's overrated, but it's an acquired taste. It's just like sushi. Anyways, if you were to cook a meal for anybody in the world, one person. Who would that be and what would you cook for them? It's Barack Obama. Wow. Actually, it's, it, 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 competition on the top is tough. I will, I will, uh, one part of me wants to cook for Gordon Ramsay, another one for Barack Obama. So I would like to have them together. If you're listening, if our podcast somehow ends up going to US, Gordon Ramsay, Obama, he is willing to yeah, cook for you. Yeah, those the people will want to cook for them. And his meals are yes. amazing. For Gordon Ramsay, I would want him to try my version of the beef Wellington. For Obama, of course, we will into a home of fish, brown ugali, and maybe skumawiki or omanagu there. As interesting as this podcast has been, and as many questions as we would have liked to ask, Sadly, it has to come. Like all good things. All yes, good things all good things are. But before down. that, we will ask this very important question, in which basically the whole part part of this podcast. Yeah, it practically themes the entire podcast. What would you say to younger people who aspire to be like you? Anyone who will aspire to be like me, yeah, I will say, and I think it's what I already said. Just be a good person. You know, people will remember how you make them feel, and when you are young, uh, it's the time to try a lot of things. You know, try anything and everything. Don't, don't be free. Don't just sit around, you know, they, you can always find something, you know, that's fun. As long as you keep your body moving, keep your mind working, it will always uh, pay, uh, pay off um, in the future. So just be a good person, be kind. Remember, people will remember how you make them feel, not what you have. Just be an empathetic human being and invest in, your, in yourself. Always try and wake up tomorrow a better person than you than you slept the the night before very inspiration yeah speech. um uh, yeah that was quite a podcast i'm actually lost for words for once so um i hope you enjoyed the podcast and have learned a few things um if you're a man united fan sorry i have to put that out there sorry guys <laughs> Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Tell me any last remarks. Uh, any last remarks? Bye. <laughs> ah, we have to end the podcast in style. On three, we say done. One, two, three, done! done. We are Mtotonese. A digital platform that empowers children. We curate and create engaging content about and by children. Through audio, video, writing and infographics. We believe children should be players, not spectators. Through child-led research, we amplify young voices, shaping policies and programs. 
To partner or donate, send an email to info at totalnews.com or call 0705855258. Total News, making children visible.